And as a disclaimer, I never, ever directly spray fragrance onto my needs. So hello, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my very small YouTube channel about knitting. My name is Isabelle. I am in France. I have three sons and I have three cats. You know why some have said it's related if you've watched uh, my episode number 100. And I'm filming these videos in English because I miss my English so very, very much. I used to live in the United States over 32 years ago, and I don't have that many opportunities any longer to be talking in English. So you are my own opportunity to do so about once a week. Today, it's going to be a special video. A special video I just had the idea of when I was recording another of my videos that you must have seen just the week before. Uh, because I was saying that yarn smell is extremely important to me and this um, 100 kg, 100 one kilogram, 1,000 grams of yarn from Atelier Pure Laine, her empty down, uh, was smelling so good that it prompted me to cast on something with it when I had it in my room because I had not put it away after I bought it. And I just could not resist. And if you've seen my episode, I will write here which number because I'm not sure whenever this this one is going to be up. Uh, that prompted me to cast something on and I'm uh, knitting the Pathways um, shawl from May UKP in the contrast uh, book that my eldest son bought me. And the idea I had when I was saying that yarn smell was so important to me is uh, which fragrance do I wear when I wear my knits? And as a disclaimer, please understand that I do not spray fragrance directly on my knits. On my knits, uh, never. I always spray either on my undergarments or in my coat, and that the fragrance just migrates to the wool the way by contact. I never spray uh, directly on the wool and please don't do that. And I would not ad advise you to do that. If you know you can do that, um, please let me know in the comments down below. But I think the alcohol and all the um, products and molecules that are in the fragrance would really damage the wool the way it would damage your hair or something like that. But fragrance has always been very important in, to me, very important into my life. I've always worn perfume or fragrance. And even in the darkest parts of my own life, when we barely had enough to eat, I would always save enough to buy me my own fragrance. So uh, yes. Which fragrance do I wear with my needs? So yes, as I was telling you, I've always worn fragrance from the moment I was a teenager uh, up to now. Uh, now I have stabilized for many, 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 many years which fragrance I wear. And this is why I thought to talk about because I'm always wearing the same. Um, I have fragrance I wear during the summertime. I have the other ones I wear during the winter time. And to tell you as much as these signature fragrance are mine, um, one of my kid, my second kid, uh, as, as uh, I'm not sure how you say that in English, uh, he was a baby, I was breastfeeding them for the year, each, each, each one of them. He stole my scarf and he adopted it as uh, his own transi transition piece. I'm not sure how you call that in English, but anyway, you know that kids sometimes have toys or other, other things that they carry with them that brings comfort to them. 
he stole one of my scarf and he's the one to say this is you this is your smell with my own perfume and my own fragrance so which one I, have i been wearing for over 30 years over 30 years and this is a new one because the old one maybe i guess i can i can see if i have an empty bottle okay so yes i had um, an empty bottle so this one uh, I was just looking at it before, was created in 1983. And the two main fragrances I'm going to be talking about are uh, by Serge Lutens. I'm, I think it's, maybe I can prop a picture because you won't see anything uh, here. Uh, it's Ombre Sultan. So uh, it was created after I went back uh, to France, but before my first, uh, just after my first son, first son was born, and when I smell it for the first time, it was a, need, a direct hit, and I said, okay, this one is for me. It's my my own perfume. On the Serge Lutin website, they say that Ambre Sultan is amber, vanilla, and patchouli, and when I was a teenager. Uh, I would wear these little bottles of patchouli oil you could, you could buy very cheap um, because I did not have any money. Uh, but anyway, I think the ember in Ambre Sultan, of course, is the main, the main part, but the patchouli background is the one that also I like a lot. And as you will see, as you know, this video goes on. I like spicy smells. I don't like floral stuff. I don't like the very ozone uh, fragrance that at some point were very, very popular and that smell like nothing. <laughs> I just can't. Um, the only one smell that is totally artificial that I like is Ambroxan. But uh, uh, which is a, um, a way to uh, have a perfume smell like amber, but without the amber that is um, that you can get from animals. Um, uh, and uh, uh, well, anyway, that I like spicy smells. This is what I am. And uh, the thing is, uh, Ambre Sultan goes very well with my needs with the smell of the sheep i think it's in my opinion i know i know that smells colors all of that is extremely personal and if you like aerial smells if you like soaps soapy smells if you like flower smells that i really don't like at all it's perfectly fine the only important thing is what you like and that brings you joy every time i have a splash of ombre sultan it brings me joy and happiness so this one is empty fortunately now at his job my son can um, have a special discounts on once or twice a year on a selected line of perfume Serge Lutin's ones, not all of them, but some of them, and Ambre Sultan is in one of them, uh, is in the list, so I can have over 50% off because these are very, very, very expensive. So don't go out of your budget just to get that one. You can have knock knockoffs that are really good or any other kind of uh, fragrance, but uh, I like his world. I first discovered Serge Lutens when he was working with Shiseido and uh, uh, with the Feminité du Bois perfume that I bought. I just thought it would not last long enough to me. And to me, I don't want, this is a, quite of a heavy perfume, a heavy fragrance. But what I like most is that it, it lingers and it stays in my um, clothes. And I can have, I never ever splash perfume on my knits, but I would, you know, put it on my dress. This is a linen dress. Put it on a dress, on a coat or something. And then when the knitted piece touches it, it kind of absorbs the smell, but not with all the molecules and alcohol and everything that 
it could get if you directly spray on, on wool. And what I like is after I've placed a shawl in my, in my wardrobe uh, for a few days or months and I take it back, it smells like my, uh, my perfumes. So Ombre Sultan being a very heavy fragrance, it's more for the winter time. I only wear it during the winter time because I think it's too heavy for the summer summertime. But once again, it's a matter of preference. And as we are in the summertime, I have another Serge Lutin's perfume that I discovered after I discovered uh, Ombre Sultan. So as we are during the summertime and the warmer months, uh, in 2001, I think, uh, I, I've seen Serge Lutens created uh, another fragrance, which is uh, Shergi. So this one is the one I got from my son, workplace. And Shergi is uh, the wind that you have in North Africa, a very dry and very warm wind. Uh, Serge Lutens is from... Morocco or Tunisia, I don't recall exactly. It's, he, he's from north of, of Africa. And I think all this fantasy in, about what, what is in North Africa and the fantasy, he created the fragrance to smell that the same way his fantasy wind, he would fantasize the way the Shergi wind would smell. And uh, uh, so the basic smell is immortal. I think it's everlasting flower that you call it. I, I will write the Latin name here because I'm not sure I recall which one it is. Uh, Cuir de Russie, which is leather from Russia, Russia whatever that means, and uh, hay. And this is a very, very special fragrance too, a very unique um, I've never smelled, smelled. I've never encountered any fragrance that would smell like Shergi. So it's warm, it's dry, maybe it smells like the fantasy wind in Serge Lutin's imagination and interpretation. And it's very, very, very unique. So um, the same way as Ambre Sultan, it lasts for a long time. It lingers into my clothes. I can, you know, uh, take another, uh, a, a, a shawl or something that uh, has been in contact with my clothes where I had Shergi and I can still smell it. And this is what I like a lot, to be able to find my smell again once uh, I take one of my pieces that have not been washed, of course, because it goes away with uh, washing the piece. So these two ones have been in my life. So 2001, I, th I think I said, uh, and the other one was uh, 1985 or something. Uh, so they have been into my life for 25, 30 years. And these are my signature smells and the ones I'm very wearing every, every, every day. Now, I do have less expensive ones and uh, uh, I think I need, I will stop because uh, it was the, the year the stores opened in Paris. Oh, I, 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 I will write down or, uh, on uh, Ambre Sultan too because I think I have my dates mix, mixed up when I was talking. Anyway, uh, this store uh, is Lush and it opened uh, in Paris in 1995 or something. Uh, the first time I saw it was in a train station, in a store at a, a train station mall, let's say that way. And it was around the Christmas time and they were having a lot of animation and uh, to describe the company. And I think I, I liked I like that. This is a company from UK, so I guess you can find them everywhere uh, in the world. And uh, um, they have they already had at that time um, uh, they were talking about environment and being environment friendly, less packaging, uh, solid perfume, solid 
shampoos and stuff, um, uh, using products that do not harm the earth, uh, not tested on animals and everything. They were quite in advance with that type of uh, way to present themselves. I haven't checked, I, I'm honest, I haven't checked if all what they say will stand a uh, close uh, inquiry and if you look closely, if they do what they say. Uh, but anyway, I liked at the time this kind of uh, approach. And during the Christmas time, they have and now I think they have it year round, but at the time they, they only had it at the Christmas time, a special line of uh, body cream that would give back to some kind of a charity. I'm not sure it's the same every year or if they change or if, a, if it's a batch of charities. Uh, but anyway, part of what you would spend on that line would go to charities. So I liked that too. So what I discovered, the first one I, I discovered in, at the time in, in the store was uh, Karma. Karma, so this is my, I'm not sure, four, five, six uh, small bottle. Uh, Karma is mainly patchouli, uh, orange and pine tree. Big surprise, big, big surprise. And in a way I said, a few minutes ago that I do not like clean soapy smells, but this one smells like clean soapy smells, smell, and you're going to tell me what does a dirty soapy smell smell like. I don't know, but this one smells like clean soap with a patchouli background. And I like that. It smells like the store, in a way. The smell you smell when you enter the or entered the uh, lush store at the time would smell like that maybe they would spray some of it uh, in the store and they do have the body wash and the cream uh, body cream and things like that but the only one i can use is the one that have no smell their uh, charity line has uh, no special smell in it and but if you are not sensitive you can uh, also wear the same perfume on your body cream and body wash. And this one I like very much. To be honest, at some point I used to go to the gym and I would, this is why I have a smaller bottle, because I would bring the smaller bottle with me. And if I was going to be not having enough time to have a full shower and I would not shower at the gym, I would shower back home. So if I wasn't going to have enough time to go back home and shower and just have a hand wash, let's say, let's put it that way, I would use that one because it smells, it's a clean smell, a clean smell with a patchouli background. So uh, uh, yes, always that spicy type of thing and uh, um, uh, but a less, less, much less expensive uh, way. Anyway, for many years I used uh, Karma and uh, only when I would go to Paris, I, I, I did not want to buy online. I know you can, I know you can buy online, but I did not. Like. When I would go to Paris, I would buy uh, in the Lush store. There is still, there are still no Lush stores around where I live. So I still do that. And at some point, and let me check when this one was created, I discovered a perfume in 2016, and unfortunately, it doesn't exist any longer. So the page on the Lush website uh, is even gone. So this is Rentless. Rentless... Uh, uh, accents are so this is from another website about perfumes so I'm not sure you know it's a, another website it's not the Lush website and the page is gone as the perfume doesn't exist anymore it's vanilla uh, oranges amber so once again the same kind of spicy family and rentless is mud, it doesn't smell like clean soap. It smells like 
yes, the background of spicy, orangey smell that I liked. Uh, so when the first time I smelled it, I said, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I take you with me. So I got a small bottle and uh, this is the second bottle I got. It was a big bottle. I'm not sure for how long it's been, it's been gone. And I just discovered uh, last time I went to Paris, it was gone. So anyway, this one I liked a lot. It's much spicier than uh, Karma. It's not that clean soapy smell uh, that Karma has. Uh, so that's pure spice, pure spice to me. And uh, the same way uh, the Lutin's uh, fragrance are unisex, you can wear it, whether you're a man or woman. It's not designed to go with a... Uh, a special sexual orientation, uh, the Lush fragrances uh, are the same. And this one you can wear, uh, you know, uh, whether you're a man or a woman. Another spicy one that lingers, but much, much, much less than the Lutin's fragrance. Anyway, I did not know this one was gone until I, last time I went to Paris. And when I went to Paris, I went into the store uh, because I had a bit time there and I was thinking, well, maybe I'm going to get some of their uh, body wash, the olive oil one, because I don't have any more and I haven't been using it in several years now because I did not have any. Um, so I'm going to get the body wash and I'm going to see the perfume. Na, 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 na. Okay, so the lady said that uh, rentless doesn't exist any longer. What I was looking for was the solid perfume because I used to have a little solid perfume that I would bring with me in my bag and put in my wrists whenever I was feeling like I would wanted some kind of... Uh, uh, smell, <laughs> a smell boost <laughs> for uh, either my mood or for some other reasons. And she said, but anyway, this one is sort of a new one, a new one that is not replaces, uh, replacing uh, Rentless. And uh, the notes on the Lush website are patchouli, pepper, and vanilla. Another big surprise, right? And it's Lord of Misrule. When I smelled it, it was an instant hit, once again. So it's sweeter than uh, Rentless. Rentless, you know, um, how would I say that? Shergi and Ambre Sultan are very round smells to me. I'm not sure how you would say, but very round smells to me. Karma is a round smell. Rentless is a more pointy smell to me. Um, Lord of Misrule is uh, much rounder. Maybe it's the vanilla. I guess there is vanilla. <laughs> no, pepper. Yeah, pepper and vanilla. Much rounder fragrance than uh, Rentless is. And I think it's the vanilla. And I guess vanilla and amber and patchouli is um, kind of what I like. So you see, I got a big bottle because I liked it a lot. And I got uh, once again my uh, the body wash with olive oil. And uh, I got a pot, a tub of uh, the uh, uh, body cream for that they uh, give, you know, they give some back to charity. I'm not sure which one. Anyway, I'm quite happy I found this one. I was a bit uh, sad that Rentless did not exist any longer, but I'm quite happy that I found Lord of Misrule. And uh, it's a much more affordable uh, fragrance than the uh, Serge Lutin, Lutin's ones that are quite expensive. And, you know, I guess you would call that luxury or maybe high-end. Uh, high end. Uh, I know there are perfumes that are much, much, much more expensive than that. I, I know, sorry. But um, the regular price for the big bottle for Serge Lutens is about 200 euros. So I got mine now for half of that. And the 100 uh, milliliters, so the big bottle for... Uh, Lord of Misrule is 70 euros. So you, you see, 
not cheap, but much, much less expensive. I, I, I think there are fragrances that are way more expensive than that. I really think it's a expensive enough, but you know, a bottle like that, that can last you for a year. Uh, I go through a bottle of uh, Shergi or Ambre Sultan per year. So uh, as I'm using them only once uh, per season, you know, in the winter time or the summer time. So I guess I, 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 I you know, I can afford that. And this one, uh, the rent less I've been having for several many years now, and I don't use it that often, but I do like to have it in my, I'm not saying collection, but uh, you see, I was thinking my bottle has passed the mid, uh, the, the, the half, halfway point. So I need to be thinking about getting another one because I would not like to be without one. And uh, so now I have this one in exchange or, uh, uh, in replacement for rentless, but um, I always buy a new bottle before uh, my current bottle runs out because I could not stay without uh, perfume into my life. Okay, so I can tell you now, this is the second time I'm recording. I don't know what happened in the middle of the first time I recorded that video. The sound went all crazy once again, <laughs> once again. Anyway, um, yes, so that's what I was wanting to be talking about. The fragrances I like to wear and I like to find into my needs once uh, I take them out of my cupboards or door drawers. I think I said wardrobe earlier, that was not the correct word, but anyway, I like fragrance that linger and that I can retrieve several days after or weeks or even months after I've worn a garment that would be in contact with that fragrance. My colleagues know I'm here because they can smell my perfumes. Many, many of them have told me so, that they recognize I'm in the lab or in the place or whatever because they can smell my smell. And I like that. I like that. Um, many of them have asked me which perfume I was wearing. Did they buy or use them? I'm not sure. I don't know. And, you know, it's so personal because the way, the same way, and I still have it here, the same way I tell you that every little stitch can bring you joy and happiness into your life, I think in the morning, a splash of your favorite fragrance can also bring you joy and happiness. And, you know, I've been using perfume for such a long time and I never thought about it that way, but now I do, now I do. I know it's, it's happiness in the bottle for me. Every day, little spritz of my, my favorite fragrances, you know, I have, Five, five of them that I go through, and once they I run out, I buy another bottle. Um, I'm not very adventurous, but I think in a way it's the same. I'm, I'm doing the same way with yarn. Now that I found yarn that I, yarn that I love, uh, untreated, uh, rustic smelly yarn, and um, I'm not sure I've said that already or not, but Frederick told me, I said it smells like a clean barn and clean sheep. And she said, sheep don't smell like that. Clean sheep do not smell like that. So it's my imagination. And I think fragrance is also your imagination and it can bring you joy and happiness every morning or every day when you, when you use it. Uh, because if we do not actively work on having joy and happiness into our lives, it's not going to come all by itself. We do have to work on it. And I do hope that this video that is very unusual and very different from what I'm used to doing and what other people do when they talk about their needs, I hope the, it did you bring you joy and happiness. And please tell me if 
uh, perfume or fragrance. Do that to you too and which one you are using. And I'm not saying that I will like it because you've seen I don't like flower stuff and things like that. But if you do that, that's very fine. And the most important thing is that it brings you joy. So I thank you very much for being here with me. I thank you very much for subscribing. If you've not subscribed yet, what are you doing? And uh, yeah, I hope I will see you next time.